uh, Frenemies by Serena McIntyre. Uh, the series logline is, a cantankerous hipster Regina befriends her evangelical mortal teenage enemy to plan a funeral for the guy they feuded over in high school while organizing a high school reunion over Zoom with her quirky classmates in this mockumentary. Close up, bathroom floor. The base of a toilet and two feet with underwear wrapped around the ankles. A bite of dark brown ice cream lands on the ground. A spoon picks it up. Pull back to reveal interior Regina's bathroom day. Regina, 28, female, goth hipster with red hair. She's only wearing a band t-shirt. An open yearbook sits on her lap. She pops the ice cream into her mouth as she uses the toilet. That's not proof. Regina reveals her other hand. It holds a pint of chocolate ice cream. It drips onto a yearbook photo of the ASB class of 2010 officers. Young gothling Regina poses with a cheerleader and football player. She sticks out like a sore thumb. Regina wistfully looks at a football player. This was Austin Collins. He is now dead. She snaps out of it. Regina wipes off the ice cream with her finger, wipes off the ice cream with her finger, scratches her nail across the cheerleader's face. Still drives her nuts that she came in second place. She's gonna bring it up. I'd put 20 bucks on it. She licks the ice cream off of her finger. She sniffs the finger, wrinkles her nose, glances at her smartwatch. Shit. She pops another bite of ice cream into her mouth. She pulls up her underwear as she hustles past the camera. Interior, Regina's living room, continuous. Regina strides into her minimalist living room. She yanks a wedgie out of her butt, then sets the ice cream on a coffee table. She marches to her standing desk, props the yearbook up next to her computer monitor, and logs into interior virtual meeting continuous. The meeting platform Zoom appears. Colby, 28, female, Lululemon soccer mom, full of herself, impatiently waits. Regina's face pops up on Zoom. They smirk at each other. <laughs> Finally. Uncomfortable beat. Regina responds with a stare. So, what have you been up to the past 10 years? I married Bill Reed. We were prom queen and king, remember? We have like four kids, now in 50,000 followers on Instagram. Our life is so perfect. Regina continues to stare Colby down. But you've done nothing over the last 10 years. Regina bursts into exaggerated tears. I'm a spinster, sad and alone in this lonely home. I'm not married, my doctor says I'm barren. And I only have 10 followers on Instagram, my life is miserable. <laughs> this is better than Grey Gardens. False. My life is awesome. I live in an amazing penthouse in the city. I have a sensational career. And I don't need Instagram to validate my life choices to internet strangers. But you still don't have a husband or kids. I'm not narcissistic enough to have children. Besides, I prefer money and freedom. Sad. I would be lost without women and kids. The women silently challenge each other to respond. At least my life purpose goes beyond turning my vagina into a clown car. Clown car? <laughs> Interior, Regina's living room, talking head, day. Regina sits on her couch. The yearbook sits in her lap. She speaks directly to the camera. If I were a baby who came out of Colby's vagina, I'd leave a five-star review for the breezy and spacious interior. <laughs> if I were her husband, I'd leave a one-star review for the same reason. <laughs> Regina pages through the yearbook. A Polaroid falls from the pages, close on the Polaroid picture. Austin and young Regina in a silly pose. An imperceptible smile crosses Regina's lips. I grew up next door to Austin. Collins, from cradle to grave. Actually, we moved out of our parents' houses after graduation, but we both visited home for the holidays. Surprised diabetes didn't kill him. 
I agreed to work with Colby to plan a memor memorial for Austin at our 10 year reunion because I'm a masochist. And I needed to distract myself from the pandemic. Interior, Regina's bedroom, day, flashback. Regina stands in front of her bedroom window with the curtains open. Out the window is another closed window from the apartment building next door. A man stands inside. They stare at each other. Regina takes off her shirt, revealing just a bra. This excites the man. Regina looks at the camera and winks. She takes the bra off. He nods with hunger. A woman enters the man's room, startling him and Regina. Woman yells at the man. Regina looks at the camera, pouts. Interior, Regina's living room, talking head, day. Regina flips through the yearbook, pauses, rolls her eyes. Colby and the Coterie, Austin, Will, and their jock cheerleader friends. Regina flips through another yearbook photo, scoffs. <laughs> Prayer club. Colby victimized the, the school with her evangelical phase. And we went to public school. Interior, Colby's family room, talking head, day. Situated in her Instagram-worthy family room, Colby speaks to the documentary crew. A yearbook sits in her lap. Oh yeah, prayer club. I just started that to capture the Christian vote when I ran for class president. <laughs> Regina was right on my heels. But I love judging people and manipulating them with threats of eternal damnation. So I kept it going. Now it's to the point where I'm raising my kids as Christians. <laughs> Colby holds up a photo of her baptizing a baby. <laughs> I'm in too deep. Can't quit now. <laughs> Colby flips through the yearbook. As vice president, it's my duty to oversee this memorial to ensure that Austin's memory is properly preserved at our reunion, which I'm planning for our class. And I look really good on camera. Colby flips through the yearbook, pauses on a photo of Regina playing guitar, scoffs. I'm a virgin, I see glitter, I fart rainbows. <laughs> Interior, Regina's living room, talking head, day. The glitter pee makes me itch, but I have a cream for that. The rainbow farts are just delightful and smell like a bakery. I'm a ginger, so the plumbing's a little different down there. <laughs> Regina's phone chimes with a push notification. She's tagged in a video from 12 years ago on social media. She plays the video. Her face darkens. On phone screen, Austin taunts Regina. Colby glares at Austin. Regina throws her phone across the room with a primal scream. Interior, vir virtual meeting room, day. On screen, Regina holds her guitar. I wrote a song to sing for Austin's memorial. Oh, oh, that's okay. I'm sure the Lord will provide me with something else. <laughs> <laughs> Regina gives Colby a knowing look. Beat. She, the she plays a driving beat on her guitar. It sounds like a Johnny Cash song. Regina sings. Diabetes said I have plans for you, boy. I'm gonna kill you slowly, that's my ploy. Diabetes couldn't strike a bargain when the virus came a-knocking. Wanted to take his foot, take his eyes, but died to diabetes demise. He was killed by coronavirus. Stop! Stop! Austin is dead. What is wrong with you? Regina stops. A quizzical look crosses her face. Don't bother coming to the meeting. I'll the come next meeting. I'll come and go as I please. Besides, Austin is somewhere in the ether right now laughing at my song. He's in heaven, and he's laughing at the sad little neighbor girl who doesn't have a life. Your meeting invitation is revoked. Your days of supremacy are over, Colby. We're not in high school anymore. Leave my group. It's not your group, it's Austin's group. That's why I'm here. It's the high school reunion planning committee and as class president, vice president, you're not doing shit as president. You're supposed to be planning the reunion, but sat on your ass all year. I had to take over. No beat. Colby's words sink in. Regina slowly inhales, fidgets, swallows her pride. I'm sorry that you're stuck with organizing the reunion. I just... 
Couldn't bring myself to do it after. A tear falls down Regina's cheek. She brushes it away. You were in love with Austin. You're still in love with him. Regina braces herself. She takes a deep breath. Austin and I were best friends. Then he started playing football, and everything changed. He wanted nothing to do with me at school, thanks to you and your dumbass friends. The more popular he became, the more he treated me like shit. Austin's death turned my whole world upside down. Now I've missed my chance with him forever. Regina closes her eyes. Tears trickle down her face. I'm sorry about the song. I don't know how to deal with this. And as much as I loved Austin, hated him sometimes, too. Austin was terrible in bed. <laughs> so? Guys couldn't tell one hole from another back then. But he finished after, like, like 30 seconds and never repeated the favor. He probably got better. I'm sure he didn't get away with it in college. He had a finger penis. <laughs> Sad and confused, Regina meets Colby's eyes. A what? A finger penis. His penis looked like a finger, a small finger. Once, I had to ask him if it was in. You dodged a bullet. Regina bursts into laughter. <laughs> that explains why he was such an asshole. He even looks like the type of guy to have a micropene. Austin was the worst. I miss hate watching that asshole on Instagram. Oh my god, Colby said asshole. Regina and Colby share a laugh. Interior, Colby's family room, talking head, day. My vagina may have varicose veins and leak urine when I sneeze, but I can definitely tell when there's a penis in there. And Austin's penis, no bueno. Interior, Regina's living room, FaceTime call, day. Regina FaceTime calls Terry Collins, 60s zen, like the dude. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Collins. Gina, it's so nice to hear from you. It's good to talk to you, too. I want to offer my condolences about Austin. Well, thank you. I can't imagine what you're going through. Well, thank you. I sent flowers to his funeral since I couldn't attend. And I appreciate that. I, you two were so close as kids. Remember when you used to pretend marry each other in the backyard? Yep. And then we'd invite all our stuffed animals as our guests. I asked him to reconnect with you. It's okay. Sounds like I dodged a bullet. I mean, he'll always hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> Thanks for your kind words. Sorry I didn't call sooner. I just didn't know how to process his death. I was shocked, but I'm in a better place now. Well, I get it. You know, when my wife died, I went on a bender. Somehow I found myself on stage at an open mic night. And I ended up using comedy to work through my midlife crisis. I know so much better now. Yikes. <laughs> Glad those days are over. Interior, Regina's apartment, moments later. Regina types on her phone, is penis size inherited from the father? That's <laughs> all I could think about during the call. The search results appear. Yes. <laughs> Regina's eyes widen. The horror. Poor Mrs. Collins. The end. <laughs> Here. Dennis Cruz played Terry Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Rami and Hip, Regina, Mackenzie for Colby. And Luke Swansigar is na the narrator. Take a bow. And that's Serena.
you so much. Is there any questions from the audience about maybe the concept or anything about the project at all? We have Serena yeah, here. What if you um, talk when you were like when you're writing this and you're talking about like um, you know the room, the, the living room? How do you think? Um, is there a room that you've been in that you use as an example to kind of take your mind, or you just make this up? You know, the scene just from for the living room. Try not for anything. Oh. For any room, you know. Yeah. So. Um, this is a 35 page pilot and they had to condense it down to 10 pages for this reading. And so in the full version of the pilot, each room has um, a more thorough description. And there's also more characters in the other pilot and more clues to the larger story arc of the entire series that goes on in the pilot and what's in the background. Um, I'm still toying around with this idea, but for a while Colby has like a, a MAGA hat in her background <laughs> to kind of pull her into like where she's going in life. Um, yeah, yeah. And her story arc involves her eventually leaving her husband and these women become better because of each other throughout the series and um, reconcile their friendship. And then another thing is um, in the full version of the pilot, uh, Austin used to play these two women against each other and give them flowers whenever he'd mess up and like pressed flowers and so Regina's living room has like a lot of pressed flowers and that's, a, that's part of her decor choice partially because of his influence. And in the fuller version of the script, Colby catches on to the fact that Regina's so in love with him because she notices that in his background decor and he used to pull that same move on her. So yeah, the background choices of all the characters. But I mean, the, the, the places you visited in the past, like places you've been to, like you've been to a place with an orange carpet, and you say, oh, I'm gonna use that later in the description of a room or something you're working on, or that's um, what I mean, where you, oh, sorry. you come up from scratch, like what a room looks like. If you're writing it down, how it works. Well, I think that screenwriting and, and filmmaking in general is such a visual medium, and so you definitely need to be mindful of the choices. Um, I wouldn't say like, ooh, there's an orange carpet, and I want I want to put that in one of my screenplays. Um, however, I did um, stay at a friend's house, and she was really into like pressed flowers, and I thought, oh, I really thought that was such a beautiful aesthetic, and I tend to have like a good eye for those things, and. So when it was time to write this screenplay and think of the backgrounds and how it's like a visual representation of the emotional state of each character, I did pull from um, those different places in my memory to inform the script. Yes. yes. Um, for the characters, are they just like tropes that you thought of or are any of them more inspired by someone from your actual life? It's a little of both. Um, I grew up in a really rural area in eastern Washington where Spokane was the big city. And um, yeah, and then the, the full version of the script, um, there's more um, subterfuge and um, different instances that really ratchet up, the te ratchet up the tension between Colby and Regina. And some of those things are in um, Austin and Regina as well from their high school days. and. Um, I'm able to go into more in depth in the, the descriptions of the yearbook photos that like I had to kind of quickly get through in this version of the script. And there's a utilization of like Facebook and social media and just the things that you post as a teenager that now like those teenagers are now adults and are kind of getting those like memories like, oh, 10 years ago this video was published. Um, kind of like we saw real quick with um, Regina seeing that video of Austin making fun of her, which motivated her to write that horror song, right? Um, so there are more, like more of the story is like told. Some of it is inspired by things that happened to me in real life. Having, having the dynamics of growing up in a small farm town and leaving that town to move to Portland. And, um, and then some of it was just doing a lot of research on just the different types of characters that you know, are in a high school. Because one of the limitations of going to a rural high school is it's a lot of the same types of people. Um, but like representation is really important in media. And, um, and just having the right orchestration of characters um, for any cast that you have is really, really important. Um, I'm just assuming that everyone here is Caucasian, or at least presents as Caucasian. Um, in the original version of the script, there's a lot more diversity. Um, just like with casting in such a limited time, it was hard to like get the exact right casting, and so a lot of script changes had to be made. Um, for example, uh, the inciting incident that motivates Regina to write the song is actually, um, so Regina is half Korean, such as myself, and um, Austin like is making fun of her eyes in that video that makes her really mad. And in order to not whitewash the character, we changed her to a red-headed white woman, um, so that 
from you because like later and uh, that actually did like happen to me in real life. So long-winded response, yes and no. <laughs> okay. It works so well together. Oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. Definitely reminds me of people that I know in my personal life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like there's a much larger cast too. It's more the um, the actual pilot itself is more like The Office or Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. It's more of an ensemble piece. Regina and Colby are the principal leads, um, but there's uh, several other. ASD officers, because the ASD officers, at least in my high school, were the ones who like planned the high school reunion, so they're all involved, and they kind of add um, more to the story, and each have their own like story arcs and things that they're working through, and it adds a lot more depth and representation to the entire story. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that was so awesome. That was so awesome. Thank you. Um, and I was really, I loved the opening, and then I guess having written some scripts that aren't nearly as funny, but how difficult writing an opening scene is to really set the tone for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just wondering, like, uh, I guess where you got the idea, um, <laughs> and if, if that came later, or if that was the first thing that you wrote, and it kind of uh, went from there. So I'll answer your second question first. The first version of the script. Um, I was really inspired by a show in the UK called Our Country. It's Our Country or This Country. It's a mockumentary series about this, like, um, it's like their real life brother and sister, but in the show they're like cousins and they live in like the rural, rural um, UK. And they're really frustrated, like living in this like really small town. And um, it's also mockumentary style. And I think Paul Feig is like working to bring that to the US, have a US version, kind of like The Office. It's like that level of popularity over there right now. Um, so I was really into that show, um, and that show really informed a lot of um, my initial decisions with writing this script. And so I first opened it with like different images of like empty, um, an empty school, like an empty band classroom, an empty um, soccer field, an empty um, hallway filled with like locker rooms, and putting up a lot of exposition. Um, but since like writing that, I've grown more as a writer and learned better tools for how to deliver exposition. Um, in a way that doesn't lose your audience. And also like those first moments are super crucial. So although it worked for that show in the UK, um, and even just like as a writer, getting someone to read your material, you wanna engage them like immediately. And so um, through that, the revisions, I uh, removed that device from the script. And um, played around with a few different openings. None of them really stand out, which means they weren't that great. Um, but uh, I actually have a lot of mannerisms as Regina. <laughs> and, I was eating chocolate ice cream on the toilet one time. The truth comes and out. <laughs> it like happened. And I dropped the ice cream and I thought it looked like poof. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And then I was like, Regina would eat this. And so I did not. But, um, but I, I did make it into the script. 